What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods coming at y'all with our first week six preview of the week. And we had to start at the Deep South's oldest robbery in Auburn, Alabama this weekend. We got the number two ranked Georgia Bulldogs traveling to Jordan Hare Stadium to take on the number 18th ranked Auburn Tigers. The Bulldogs, as I'm recording, are a 14 and a half point favorite. I'm sure that line's going to move back and forth. And this game is going to be kicking off at 2.30 p.m. Central Time live on CBS. It is the SEC game of the week for CBS, as it usually is. But this is going to be an extremely important game, not only for the SEC championship race, but it's also going to play a huge part in the college football playoff race. It has implications all the way down, including for one of the top contenders right now in Georgia, who many people, and as myself has said on our uh, week five recap, I think Georgia's the best team in the country right this second. So we have so many storylines to talk about, man. We can start with the Bulldogs. They come in at 5-0, and oh, looking to win their fourth SEC game of the season. They're coming off their second top 10 win of the season in a shutout win over Arkansas where they dominated from kickoff all the way up until that clock hit zero. But the questions surrounding the health of this team, especially at quarterback with JT Daniels, are is one of the biggest storylines. He it's questionable, probably is going to be a game-time decision as he was last week. So we'll see on him, Tyke Smith is questionable. And they just have a bunch of players across the board that may or may not play. The injury bug decided to pick on Athens this year, and so the Bulldogs are fighting that off as they're making their SEC championship run. On the other side, the Tigers come into this game after pulling out a huge win in Death Valley. Their first win in Death Valley over LSU since 1999. They sit at 4-1 and one now with their only loss coming to number 4, Penn State. But now, can the Tigers use some of that Jordan Hare magic to pull off another upset like they did back in 2017? and 2013 to pull off a huge win over the Bulldogs. And can Bo Nix use some of that momentum from last week's special performance? We will see. But looking at the series history, man, the Bulldogs lead the overall series 61-56 with eight ties. That stretches – this series stretches back to 1892. So we have a long history, a storied rivalry this weekend on CBS. And the Bulldogs have won four straight against the Tigers. And if they can pull it off this weekend, it will give them their longest winning streak since the 40s and 50s in this series. Now, the keys to the game. Let's get to them. We'll start with Georgia. The key for the Bulldogs have to start with the rushing game, especially due to the uncertainty at quarterback with Daniels and, you know, what can Stetson Bennett bring to you on the road? And the Bulldogs absolutely dominated the line of scrimmage last week, and I would imagine they're looking to impose their will similar to what they did against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Now, they flex their offensive muscle, but they also flex the depth at running back that they really have in Athens. They have three to four guys they can rotate in at any time, and they can really test this Auburn front seven, and they can stay fresh and consistent in that backfield and rotate guys and never really experience a true drop-off. You look at Zamir White, four rushing touchdowns, almost 300 yards rushing. Kendall Milton, almost 200 yards rushing. James Cook over 200 yards, two touchdowns. He's averaging over six yards per carry. And even Kenny McIntosh got into the system last week, and he has over 120 yards rushing this year. All four of those guys are going to be factors this weekend, and I really, really like. Just personally, if I had to pick one, I really like Samir White and Kendall Milton. I think that one-two punch is, is, is probably has the highest potential, but James Cook has been putting on a show, and I have been extremely impressed with him this year, really carving out his role in a very, very deep and talented Georgia running back room. Now, like I said, JT Daniels is probably going to be a game-time decision. He didn't throw on Monday, but Kirby Smart said he was going to kind of work his way into throwing this week, and they would make the decision later. I would be, I think this would be the perfect time to unleash him. But if not, you get Stetson Bennett coming in, 
who will be looking to to beat Auburn for the second straight year. He started the game last year in Athens, in which the the Bulldogs dominated twenty seven to six over the Tigers, and. The biggest thing, regardless of who starts, is to attack the middle of the Auburn defense. It's been the weakness all year long. LSU started to attack it early with Kayshawn Boutte, especially on that first drop, but then it really just kind of fell off late, and they really didn't have a great strategy. That's what Penn State did. Sean Clifford and Jahan Dotson picked this Auburn secondary apart, especially over the mid-range passing game, that intermediate stuff. Now, what has to happen for me is Bennett had a lot of success last year with these intermediate passes, and he's replicated it in his time this year. But the biggest thing is he's really been more consistent on the deep ball this year. He has an 86.5 PFF grade on passes 20-plus yards down the field, and that's where I think he's going to make a living is in that play action in where that Auburn defense gets sucked up because they just beat them and beat them and beat them over the head with the run game. And then what they're going to do is go right over the top. Auburn has a huge hole at safety, man. Their safeties are not great in space, especially in coverage. And outside of Roger McCreary, they really don't have that true shutdown corner. And I expect Auburn to take advantage of that. And then, you know, another big part of this key is the offensive line. They had a dominant performance last weekend, and I think it's going to be another key this weekend because when you look at this Auburn D-line, yes, they haven't been the most consistent all season, but they really made their impact felt in the second half of that LSU game. It really was one of the catalysts for that comeback win for the Tigers. Now, you look at this offensive line, if only allow three sacks, one quarterback hit, and 15 pressures over their first five games, and they're paving a way for a rushing attack with over with almost 200 yards per game and averaging over two touchdowns per game. They're big, they're physical, they're disciplined, and they don't make mistakes, and they have a nasty streak in them, and they absolutely showed that last week when Arkansas came to town and Georgia ran right through that defense. Now, on the other side, Auburn is similar because this Auburn offense has always, for years now, relied on the rushing attack to open up the offense, especially when you look at how dangerous this front seven and pass rushing can be for the Bulldogs. They can get pressure if a team becomes one-dimensional. But for me, the overall key is not only just to have the run game, but just get the running backs involved in the game plan, whether that be running and or short, quick passes and receiving and get them in open space. When you look at this Auburn offense, they have such a that they have a lack of depth and a lack of proven talent at wide receiver. So the best way, best you know, playmakers to put the ball in their hand are at the running back spot. They're the most proven, they're the most consistent, and easily the most explosive. And so they're gonna have to go give these guys a chance to make plays in open space against these Georgia defenders. Bigsby. One of the best running backs in the country. He looks a little banged up. There's been reports he could possibly be nursing an injury, but we'll see more this weekend. But he has 430 yards rushing, averaging almost six yards per carry and four rushing touchdowns. Jarquez Hunter has been an outstanding breakout freshman for the Tigers. 447 rushing yards, averaging over 10 yards per carry and three rushing touchdowns. Then you have Shivers, who just came back from his injury and played a big role last week in that LSU comeback in the second half. Now, the, the biggest thing is they have to stick with the running game. Even if, it's not, even if it's not working early, you have to keep the Georgia defense honest. You cannot let them be, you cannot let Georgia make you one dimensional. That's when things get very ugly. Just ask Arkansas, just ask Vanderbilt, South Carolina, Clemson. You cannot let Georgia's defense make you one dimensional. Get these guys on screens, swing passes, get them into the flats and let them go make plays. It's going to, one, allow them to have more room to work against a very talented Georgia defense. It's going to get them more favorable matchups in the open space, and it's also going to limit the impact of the pass rush from this Georgia front seven. That's what they did in the second half against LSU, and it worked to it worked perfectly, and they need to replicate that this week and put some pressure on this Georgia defense, which really and truly has not had much pressure because they have just dominated everybody. And on the flip side, Bo Nix has to utilize all that positive momentum from last weekend. He's got to be a playmaker. I don't expect big passing numbers, but you just have to go out and make plays like he did last weekend. Make smart decisions with the ball and continue to be athletic outside the pocket and make plays with your legs. 
He's thrown for almost a thousand yards, six touchdowns, still no interceptions, which is huge for Knicks. 123 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown this year. He has to produce under pressure, though, and he's got to show the ability, like he did last week, to make something out of nothing this weekend because Georgia is going to get pressure against this Auburn O-line. They might be able to play well, but Georgia's going to get to him a few times, and he's got to turn those big potential losses and turnover downs into positive plays and or live to fight another day, get rid of the ball, find some way to limit the, the hurt that the Georgia front seven can bring on an offense. Nix is only completing 35% of his passes under pressure, grades below a 55, and passing grade when under pressure, and that's got to change. He changed it last weekend. Nix has to channel that inner Johnny Manziel and go make plays this weekend against this Georgia front seven if Auburn expects to pull the upset. Now, the matchup to watch for me is going to be the Auburn wide receivers against the Georgia secondary because the run game might be key for Auburn. But against this Georgia team, to upset the number two team in the country, you're going to have to be balanced. And you already know Bo Nix is going to have to make four or five throws in this game to win this game. He's going to have to try to find a way to make the plays when it's called on because Georgia's not just going to let you run freely on their front seven. And on top of that, Georgia's DBs have been a huge strength, even though many people had questions due to the inexperience and turnover they had in the secondary. Now, Auburn's wide receivers have been through a lot this season, a lot of turmoil, a lot of drama, and it culminated with Cornelius Williams being fired, the wide receiving coach, after week four struggle against Georgia State. Now, the season has been defined by inconsistency, by drops, and it's absolutely killed the offensive momentum in multiple games. 16 drops this season for the Tigers. And then on top of that, no wide receiver is averaging over 15 yards per catch with more than 10 catches, and zero wide receivers are averaging more than eight yards gained after a catch. So no no yak from any of these wide receivers, and that is a major problem. They just don't have playmakers on the outside. The leading pass catcher is tight end John John Samuel Shanker with 18 catches for 236 yards, which really shows how inconsistent they've been. Demetrius Robertson has this revenge game this weekend. He has 17 for 172 and two touchdowns. And then Kobe Hudson and Shedrick Jackson have 14 catches apiece and a touchdown. So all three of these guys are going to have to find a way to step up for the Auburn Tigers. Now, they have to get separation. They have to make tough catches in coverage over defenders. And they also have to find a way to help Knicks make plays to keep this Georgia defense honest. Because if Georgia can just load the box and stop the run and trust their DBs on islands, it's going to cause a lot of problems for this Auburn offense. And it is a recipe for disaster for the Auburn Tigers. Now, the secondary for Georgia had the most turnover this season. They were, And then on top of that, they were hit with injuries and they performed extremely well this season. And they've been the catalyst for a defense only allowing 110 yards passing per game and less than 4.7 points per game. Latavius Brini, Lewis, Lewis Kahn, and Chris Smith have been the highest graded coverage defenders. And that doesn't even include the two corners who have been lights out in Keeley Ringo and De'Aaron Kendrick. That's been one of the best duos in the country. The secondary has seven INTs this season led by Chris Smith at that safety spot. But one of the defining stats of the secondary is the is the catch percentage. Oh, sorry for for these um, cornerbacks. Ringo only allowing eight percent of his targets to be caught, which is only one catch this year total. And Kendrick's only allowing a thirty five percent catch rate on three catches. They are shut down. They are elite. They can be trusted on an island, and they match up very well with these inexperienced Auburn wide receivers. The secondary doesn't have to do anything special, guys. They just have to continue playing their type of game, which I define as suffocating physical brand of coverage, and I expect the secondary to come in with a significant advantage. And if they take advantage of it, Auburn could be in for a long day. Now, you know, I know everyone sees the Auburn jerseys in the background. They're like, man, he's got to be biased. He's got to be, well, listen, this podcast comes first before any, you know, alumni connections or anything like that. Listen, Georgia – I stand by the statement that they are the best team in the country. I think the matchup for Auburn, 
in terms of what Georgia's front seven and run game can do is a ter- or run defense can do is a terrible matchup. They have playmakers in multiple spots on the offensive side of the ball. I don't trust this D line to get pressure on Daniels and or Bennett. And what I think is going to happen is Georgia's just going to pound the rock, do exactly what they did against Arkansas, play stifling defense. And what they're going to do is get after Knicks in the passing game. And that front seven is going to go make plays. Listen, Nicobe Dean, and I said this on the crowded booth with Bryce Kuhn, Nicobe Dean is making his argument to be the best defensive player in college football, in my opinion, this season. He is playing lights out. He is fast, physical. He's commanding the offense. The Kobe Dean is the best linebacker in the country, in my opinion. He has played absolutely amazing football. Aubrey gets back Owen Papo, though, which should be a big help for their defense. But if Tyke Smith comes back for Georgia, you're talking about this Georgia defense going to a whole nother level because Tyke Smith is that type of player at that star position. For me, that defensive line with Jordan Davis with, and then Nicobe Dean, at linebacker, I just think Auburn's going to have a tough time moving the football consistently. I know the home crowd's going to be in it. I know they're doing – I believe they're doing a stripe out. I just think Georgia is too good for this Auburn team. I think Georgia continues to run to the national title or the SEC championship. I have Georgia winning this matchup 28-10. to 10. Over the Auburn Tigers, I got an 18-point win, which is covering the spread for the Bulldogs. Yes, Jordan Hare's electric. Yes, Jordan Hare's special things happen. I just think this might be the best Georgia team that we have seen in a very long time. I think they're better than this 2017's team. I think they're better than the last national championship team in the 80s they've had. They don't have Herschel Walker, but they're better at almost every other position. This defense is legit. If JT Daniels can come back healthy, it's a problem. And for me, they just have too much talent, too much speed, and too much execution and momentum right now for the Auburn Tigers. And for me, Georgia 28, Auburn 10. Guys, smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and like this video. Share it with any Facebook groups, friends, family, anything. Man, I appreciate all the support. So hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe and also comment your score score prediction and takeaways of the game below. What are you looking for? What players are you looking for? What matchups? Give me your breakdown of the game and comment your score prediction in the comments right now before you click off. But guys, I appreciate y'all tuning in. More recaps coming this afternoon and the rest of the week, so I appreciate it. But guys, for right now, the Blue Bloods are out.